Kick, kick. Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and it is Friday, August 23rd, vlog number 12. 12, yeah, hell yeah, that's awesome. Uh, guys, the, the vlogs are getting a great responses. I'm really happy that you guys are giving me good feedback. It'll keep me doing them. So uh, I really, really appreciate the feedback on that. And uh, so it's kind of nasty here in the Northeast. Um, and I, I gotta say, it's a, already a first sense of fall today. We've had a good hot summer. It's been pretty humid up here in the Northeast, like as usual. Um, but man, the, the fall uh, weather, we're gonna really feel it uh, this weekend. Uh, I think it's only supposed to get up into the 70s, uh, mid to high 70s and no humidity. So we're starting to get that cool air already. I mean, I love this, this time of year up here in the Northeast. One of my favorite times, if not my favorite time, uh, in, in, in the New York area. So if I did move south, which is still looking pretty promising, um, you know, it's one thing I would probably miss is the uh, the fall weather if I was to go to Florida or something. So, uh, but anyways, so let's uh, please be sure to like, subscribe. It just popped into my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, for the price of a cup of coffee. You can send us a small donation. There's a PayPal donation link below. And uh, whatever you guys can afford, again, keeps this content going, keeps the, uh, the vintage scene going, keeps me coming out here week after week and giving you guys the knowledge to keep your dub on the road. And uh, speaking of coffee, please be sure to take a look at uh, my wife and I have joined forces and we are now selling a whole bean coffee called Mutts and Bucks and proceeds, small proceeds go towards helping a sheltered animal, helping a doggy find a good home. Uh, so if you guys can uh, help us out with that too, that would be awesome. I don't make much money on this guys, and it's really a lot is going towards uh, the development of, of the coffee, our, our logo, our branding of the bag, and, and then helping uh, the shelters out. So if you can help us out with that, that's awesome too. I really appreciate it. No biggie if you can't. So uh, where are we? So I, I've been seeing a lot of news lately, whether even on the internet, and I'm gonna have a link below in regards to this topic. And it is about the quality of work, workers. Um, I'm getting calls from different shops around the country uh, that I've gotten friendly with. And um, the quality of workers today, and I don't even know if it's just uh, restoration shops uh, I mean my sister owns a restaurant business and she's had it for over 30 years uh, 1985 she was like 17 or 18 years old she opened this restaurant up and she still runs it and then she ran another one down in West Palm Beach Florida that's why I came to learn about West Palm uh, but I got to tell you um, she's been complaining and other shops that I've been talking to have been complaining even my painters I go up to my paint shops and they're saying the quality of workers has declined um, I think we live in a time today where there's a lot of distraction going on. And I even spoke about it briefly in my podcast with um, uh, Let's Talk Dubs. Uh, and he even brought the topic up to me where, you know, where are you finding good quality workers today to work on the Beatles? And uh, it's it's hard. I mean, as of right now, I, I, I still just work on my pop and my main man, Ramsey, who just comes in part time. Uh, I need another guy like Ramsey to help me out at the shop. Uh, some guy that's got a you know an eye for craftsmanship, um, a good hand, um, artistic hand. You know Ramsey was a woodworker uh, in his in his past, so he's got a really good eye for craftsmanship and and just that perfection line. You know that sort of mentality. Uh, so we need somebody. You need people like that. But uh, this article that I uh, put in the description below is basically talking about you know. You have those older people, the baby boomers, uh, pretty much retiring, or hate to say it, dying off, and they're the ones that had the skill set to work on classic cars. Now you got youngsters coming out of schools today that haven't the, really the slightest idea on what it is to restore cars, or is the is the interest even there? I know there's a couple schools around the country that do uh, focus on vintage car restoration but it seems like as the years are getting older as we're getting uh, you know we're all getting older 
you know, uh, the vintage restorers, uh, is it going to die off? I think the, the title of it is, is it going to go the way of the VHS tape, you know, something like that. And I can argue for both ways. I mean, I can see, I'm hoping that with the, the advent of the internet, that videos like mine will go on for many, many years to come to be referenced. Um, so the tools are still there at our fingertips to, to, to learn how to restore. But is the interest still going to be there? Um, and there is still that hands-on approach that older people, um, even someone like me, I'm, a, I'm 42, so I still got some years on me uh, to restore. You know, but I've had hands-on uh, uh, a hands-on approach with these cars because I just basically dug in and, and and I dove right into the car and just started tearing it apart. And I was learning from my mistakes. The only references I really had to learn how to restore the Beetle was through the Rick Higgins videos, the Bug Me video series. So, you know, I, I learned from that, and there were old VHS tapes. There was I didn't even have a DVD player at the time. So this was like in the late 90s when DVD was just coming in. I, you know, so he didn't even have them on DVDs. It was all tape. Uh, and I learned also from the uh, J Bugs had a, a VHS at, tape at the time. It was external restoration and internal restoration. So. All that stuff is still there, and if it's not there, it's on YouTube. Uh, so I think that's going to be here for a long time. But you know, I think that just the quality of workmen, uh, workers today is—I uh, don't know the—I don't know what's going on with the mentality. Um, is it an entitlement mentality? Is it? I mean, everyone thinks they're going to be, you know, CEO in, in three to six months at a business and a job, and they lose interest after a few a few months. Um, you know, we see that today, like the average worker today, I think doesn't last at a job for more than a couple of years and then he wants to get another job. You know, but back in the old days, it was, you know, you stay, you stuck with that job almost for the rest of your life. So, you know, and no fault of their own, I think it's because, you know, look, there's a lot of uh, distractions today with the internet. You know, there's a lot of options that are laid out on your table. And, you know, a lot of youngsters can get sucked into, you know, it looking greener on the other side with somebody else that they saw on on the internet or somebody they saw on TV and there's some sort of fairy tale story out there um, that someone's making a bunch of money like say you know a few of these video game guys now on YouTube making millions of dollars a year showing you how to walk through a video game which is insane you know you sit there in your house and you're showing like how to do a walkthrough of a video game and how to beat the game and those guys are making I mean some of these guys are making I don't know over 10 million dollars a year is that insane so yeah there's options out there um, and it, it's always like you know I want to make the most money I can with doing the, the least effort <laughs> you know so and it's kind of the mentality coming out of uh, youngsters today unfortunately um, you know look I see it even in my, some of my family members you know I got young nieces and nephews and you know you see the same thing um, so that's the question for you guys what do you guys think um, is someone like me, you know, someone a shop like ours, you know, rare rare shops that like ours. There's not many, you know, vintage Volkswagen restoration shops around the country. Um, I mean, they're out there, uh, but you can probably count them on your hand, or you know, or maybe two hands. Uh, it's not like they're, you know, like Costco's or something, or McDonald's. Uh, so we're gonna be, are we gonna be in demand as the years go on? That that craftsmanship, that old school craftsmanship to restore these cars, uh, it's uh, going to be dying off. And so you got someone like me in my age that I have a few more, I have more years under my belt to restore these cars. You know, are we going to be, you know, valuable or in demand because people know that the youth are, they just don't have the knowledge or they don't want to learn. I, I don't know. So read that article, take a look, see what you think. But, you know, I got shops calling me saying, hey, you know, where are you finding good help? And I'm like, geez. I still got my dad. <laughs> it's me, my dad, and Ramsey. Um, so, and that's really it. Uh, it's been difficult to find. I mean, I put words out online to come help at my shop and work at Classic VW Bugs, and I'll pay you, and you know, we'll teach you the ropes. And uh, uh, it's just, it's it's been scarce. I mean, I got some people walk into my shop that don't even show me a resume, don't even have a card, don't even show any sort of history. Of, of what they've done before. Um, when I grew up coming out of college, I mean, that was the thing. You had to learn how to go on a job interview. 
you don't know how to go on a job interview, there's a YouTube video, I'm sure, on how to go to a job interview and be prepared. I mean, to have people come in and say, oh, I want to work here, I have experience. You know, I've had painters walk into my shop, oh, I got, you know, 30 years experience. I'm like, show me your resume. Show me pictures of your work. And there's nothing. And I'm like, okay. You got a website to at least show you? No, I don't have them. I just been in the work. I've been in the business 30 years. I'm like, you got a car? No, I don't have a car. I'm like, all right. This is really working out well. So I don't know. There's um, that's an older guy. So, but even youngsters were coming in and, and the same thing. And um, I don't know. Take a look at that uh, article. See what you think. I'd love to hear your feedback on it. Uh, you know, I spoke to one shop in in uh, the south that I was telling me, well, how are you finding? What are you doing with workers? I mean, uh, you know, he had a team. He, he at least had more, way more than me. I guess eight to ten guys working for him. So I said, you know, how are you finding? Are you finding good workers? He's like, I hire ten and I fire nine. I'm like, wow. But that would drive me insane if you're constantly doing that. How do you sustain that? How do you... You know, like that's insane. that that's unbelievable to me. So, you know, I, I just look. I, I can go out to a restaurant. My my wife and I we love to go out to dinner and go out to lunch and stuff. And the incompetence, even with waiters and waitresses today, is unbelievable. They forget like this. I mean, I'm simple when I go out to eat. What would you like to drink? Can I have a water with lemon? Literally, water with lemon. Yeah, sure, I'll be right back. I'll come back with the water, but I never get a lemon. Oh, you forgot my lemon. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, I forgot. I'll be right back with your lemon. No lemon. <laughs> it's like three or four times I got to say to this waiter or waitress, I, I still need my lemon for the, I mean, it's just, what's happening, the, the short attention span, is that part of it all, you know? I don't know. So anyways, that's that topic. I get that out of the way. Uh, see what you guys think. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. I just do think that the workforce today, maybe the youth coming out of schools, I don't know what's happening. Uh, it's just, uh, there's no work ethic, I guess. You know, I, I mean, I, I went to college. I had to pay my own college education. I worked two jobs during college. And I came out with no student loan debt. You know, I paid for everything. So I didn't have a high college life, you know, partying and stuff. I commuted to college and I used to work two jobs to pay college to pay for my way so it seems like that kind of stuff is out the window today I don't know anyway another topic that I get I was getting emailed a lot on this past few weeks is about uh, engine timing now you guys know I have a video it's one of my most successful videos on YouTube one of my most hit videos is engine timing using just a timing a test light a little uh, electrical test light has a little alligator clip on the end it's it's, it's got a point on it a little bulb in there and uh, I learned those tips from again Rick Higgins the bug me video series uh, on timing it static timing you just make sure you put your your pulley on seven and a half degrees before top dead center make sure it's pointing to number one cylinder you ground uh, the test light the point of the test light maybe on the carburetor somewhere and then you got to put the alligator clip on the negative side of the coil It's the wire that from the distributor the condenser wire that goes to the negative side of the coil uh, so I'm getting a lot of guys emailing me saying, hey, they, they're turning the distributor and the light is not going out. What could that be? Uh, and it's amazing. I got three or four emails in one week about that same topic and from, from different people. So um, from what I understand today, there are some electronic ignition uh, modules that they sell now. Um, I think it's been even for a while that you can't static time. The light's always on. So you're gonna to have to use a um, a test light gun. You know, it's kind of like a strobe light, you know, and it, it, it blinks every time the uh, the motor's running, and you see where the uh, the, ha the the hash mark is, the hack mark is, the seven and a half degree mark on your pulley it comes up on the split in the block, and then you turn the distributor to try to make sure that that um, that mark lines up with the split in the block. I'll probably do a video on that sometime. Uh, so, so, yeah, sometimes the electronic ignition modules uh, do, just can't be static time. The light's always on. I have one in my 70 convertible. I think it's a Petronix, and for some reason that works fine um, using the, the static. Uh, the other reason why might, the light might always be on is that you, 
have it on the wrong side of the coil. So you might be on the positive side of the coil, not the negative side, so it's always on. Uh, so double check that sometimes. Uh, people get confused and they don't realize that they're putting it on the positive side of the coil, not the negative. Um, and then the other the reason would be uh, check your points. If your points aren't opening and closing, and maybe they're always closed, um, and they're not they're not opening, uh, that could also mean that the light's always on. So you gotta you gotta double check that as well. So um, yeah, just that quick tip there um, when it comes to uh, timing. I'll probably do. Yeah, another timing video. I'm probably due. That's a, that's years old. I think seven, eight years old, maybe that video. But it's one of the most popular videos on YouTube for Volkswagen timing. Um, so I'll probably do something soon to rehash that all again, and maybe we'll use a uh, <clears throat> a, a timing light, a gun to uh, show you how to. Sometimes I like to do both because sometimes the, the the timing light while the motor's running shows a different result than static timing. So. Uh, but that's it guys I am just pulling into work I'd love to hear your comments about what I've spoken about today and uh, this weekend I'm going to a show called Wolfsburg I've been asked to go to the show like three years in a row it's still fairly new I think it's their third year um, and it's kind of similar to what I'm doing with my coffee uh, where they um, they help uh, sheltered animals and, and things like that humane society uh, thing so it's a VW Audi show up in uh, Port Jervis uh, New York, so it's a little a little bit of a ride for me, uh, but I'm going to go check it out. It's not that long of a show. I think it's like 11 or 10 o'clock show. It's about 2 or so. Nothing crazy. Uh, if you guys want to join me, uh, I'll, I will definitely be up there. you want to meet me on the road, please let me know. That's fine, too. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the weekend. Uh, it's the last week of uh, August coming up, and uh, summer is, I guess, unofficially on its way out. Um, to me, summer doesn't end until the end of September, which is the true... Uh, what do they call it, the solstice or something, or fall, equinox, equinox is coming up, right, so, okay, August 23rd, in the bag, I'll talk to you guys uh, sometime next week, and uh, please be sure to like, subscribe again, and uh, if you've got any comments, leave them below, all right, take care. Um.